<laughs> All right, okay. Um, what is a mural project and how did you get involved with the project? Okay, there's a huge, there's a very lengthy definition that I could go into for the first part of the, the first part of the question. Um, what is a mural project? As far as the mural arts program is involved, a community mural project is a work of public art that brings in the vision and the concepts of the neighborhood, in this case, in this case more or less the city, but not only brings in visions and concepts of a certain neighborhood or a certain group of people, but also um, involves that group of people in the actual physical creation of the project as well, through community paint days and um, well, that's the main thing, is through community paint days. So there, with the mural arts program, the, the, um, what we try to do is get them involved right through conception, through the creation. Um, this project in general is a little bit different for me because I've, this is the first time that I was ever the lead muralist on a project that I didn't also design. Um, I'd be lying if I said there wasn't a little bit of an ego thing when they asked me to do it. I had, I, I feel bad saying that, but it, it's true, because I had to think about it, I had to weigh the benefits and the negatives and all, all of that. Um, I guess finally what what made me, what won out and made me say, yeah, I will dedicate a year of my life to creating another artist's design is, is first of all, the experience of getting to do this project, the scale of this project, uh, the complexity of this project. And also, the main thing I needed to do was meet JJ before I agreed to do anything. So, I'd say within two minutes of meeting JJ, I was completely comfortable with him and decided that I could definitely entertain the thought of moving forward with this and figuring things out. Um, yeah, I guess that's about a full answer to that. Okay. Um, did you did you work closely with the photographer? Um, as far as the design goes, that was all JJ. Um, it really, this whole entire project, this whole entire project was really kind of a two-part project. Um, photographs and designs, JJ, after all of that was done, got handed over to us and it was time for us to fabricate, to fabricate the design. Um, he has, of course, been involved the whole, the whole way. I've been, we've actually gotten to be pretty close friends since this has started. Um, so, you know, I'm keeping him, him in yeah, keeping him involved in sending photographs of his progress all throughout, and he's been in the studio a bunch. So. And um, how did the airport get chosen? Like, why did you choose this spot? I had nothing to do with it. <laughs> um, Deputy Mayor Ryan Cutler actually was responsible for this for this wall. Um, uh, her story has it that she was sitting in traffic on 95 and was just looking at the drab, dreary cement wall and um, decided that it needed to have something on it. So I, I'm not exactly sure what wheels began to turn after that, but she somehow got a hold of, uh, well not somehow, she got a hold of Jane Golden, the Mural Arts Program's founding director, executive, uh, ex founder and executive director, and um, yeah, just got rolling on it. I think that was, I, th I think they started talking about it sometime in late 08 or 09 maybe. So it was a couple years in the, the development. Um, what are some difficulties that came with painting on a garage versus a regular wall space? Um, this garage, this garage, probably not even so much the negative space in between the in between the decks of the garage, but you can see just kind of how awkward the garage is itself. Um, it made. From, from the standpoint of your basic mural arts project, it made it very difficult to get the measurements down for the preliminary design. Uh, normally, on a, let's say there's just a normal row home in West Philly or something that project's going up on. That's when we go out, we take very detailed measurements of any instructions on the wall, any pipes, doorways, windows, things of that nature. And we develop a preliminary design of what the, what the finished project is going to look like at maybe a, like a 1 12th scale, so like one inch on the design would be one foot on the actual wall. Um, this was much more difficult because we didn't have thousands and thousands of dollars to spend right off the bat to get lifts out here to take detailed measurements. That's where we had to get into subcontractors and surveyors and all that stuff and rely on what they digitally came up with. And uh, pretty much until April 6th, just had our fingers crossed that everything was going to work out perfectly. Um, 
April 6th is when we put the first piece of parachute cloth up, and I personally was absolutely terrified because until that point, we didn't know how well it was going to read on this wall because the wall is extremely awkward and shaped. It's not flat. So we were, we were nervous as to how a figure was going to read on a wall with all those ridges and columns and things of that nature on it. Um, we, we were worried that it wasn't going to read as a flat figure. But luckily, after we got the first few sheets up, that was something that we didn't have to worry about. Anymore. This happens all day. Yeah. Okay. Um, wait, Cindy, should I ask him again, like, how do you... Yeah, ask paint? him to go over um, community days and the whole process of wallpapering. Okay. And then I think we're good. Yeah, how do you create the photography to me or, like, the process again, if you don't mind? Um, <laughs> let's see. Like, in any project, this one in particular... Like this one in particular. This one in particular? Okay. Yeah. Uh, with this one, once we, once JJ had decided right where each section, where each figure was going to lie on the wall, and figured out just how each section of each figure was going to lie on the wall, that's when he gave us not his photographs of not only the individual dancers, but each section of the dancer. So from that point on, it was our, it was our turn to get parachute cloth primed and ready. Um, digitally project, mix paint, paint. It's it's actually a really natural progression. It's um, that's a question that I get a lot, and I haven't figured out how to really articulately answer because I, I've, every mural that I've worked on so far has had that photograph uh, that photographic transfer into the design. Um, digitally Photoshop, in this case, helped a great deal. It was the first time I ever used posterization or. Uh, Photoshop to a great degree, uh, digital projection, I've never used that before. Uh, previously it was just photo reference, palette, paint, brush, paint it. Uh, this one was a little bit too massive to handle that, so we had to strategically break everything down into a puzzle. Um, there you go. Okay, and um, um, final question. What do you think is public art's role in society? That's a good one. Um, that's a really good one. <laughs> Public art's role in society. Well, let me kind of go off on a little side thing. I'm, I'll make it quick. I won't be too long-winded. But I went to graduate school at the Pennsylvania Academy of Fine Arts. And there's two, there's two very different ways of thinking. There's public art and then there's fine art academia. Um, I got a lot of flack from my professors who had, were very grounded in the fine art and academia world. I got a lot of flack from them for being a public artist because uh, more so even than a public artist, a muralist. Um, public art such as sculpture and things like that seem to have a little bit more of a highbrow um, aura about them than a mural does. Uh, I think it probably has something to do with the fact that with a public mural you're inviting, you're inviting just anyone that you possibly can in to take part in the project. And, if you're a very, very trained, and I'm gonna say a pretentious artist in academia, you're going to look down at that and see that as not a very uh, um, artistic, um, not a very integral artistic process, which I don't agree with at all. I think, I, I, I think that a, a very good collaborative community mural is one of the most socially relevant pieces that you can, that you can get, because it's not just a singular vision. It's the vision of an entire neighborhood. It's the vision of an entire group of people, and it's also a way of showing of showing folks that you know art isn't something that has to be quarantined off into a gallery or a museum that's out of reach that they just aren't smart enough to get. Which a lot of people think because they don't get access to museums, they don't go to galleries, so they just kind of see it as this this lofty thing up in its ivory tower, which I I don't agree with, and I think that. When you uh, try to bridge that gap with something like a community mural, I think that speaks volumes to uh, to introduce people to introduce people to art and figure out that they actually can be creative, they actually can uh, collaborate and make something make something happen, work together towards a common goal. So social relevance is pretty much the bullet point that I would take out of that. <laughs> so, that's excellent. Is it good?